Okay. With me today is Brooklyn. And she is 11 months old, right? Mm -hmm. Going to be almost a year. Okay. And we're go I'm going to talk today about why couldn't we have been born into a better family. You're interested in that food, aren't you? Um, like the Lord. You know, I often thought to myself, why wasn't I born into a better family? Why wasn't I given an older brother that would have been a better uh, an inspiration? Influence. Or an influence on me, yeah. <laughs> uh, why couldn't I have been born into a family who loved God more, you know? My family went to church every once in a while, but it seemed like they would go to church for five or six times and then all of a sudden quit for the next two years. Well, a couple years down the road, they do the same thing, you know. But just luckily me, one day the Lord caught on to me, you know, and I was uh, caught up in the Spirit of the Lord. Not like, not like the Apostle Paul, but I was, my heart, you know, I was caught up into the Spirit of the Lord. I, I was sitting there, I was about 10 years old, and I'll never forget it. And this old preacher was up preaching, had gray hair, skinny as a rail. You know, down south, people were a lot skinnier back in the hills because there wasn't much work around. A lot of people didn't just sit around and eat all the time like we do now. But uh, he was up preaching. He's, I'll never forget what he said. The Spirit was on him real good. And he said, these 40 years, he says, the Lord has never let me down. And I, I knew that. You want now? Go, Mamma. Okay. Say bye to everybody. Hey, see you later. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> okay, go to Mammal. There you go. You gonna walk all the way over there? I don't think you will, but all right, let's see if she will. No. <laughs> go to Mammal. Come. Huh? Okay. And I was up. Or the preacher was preaching. And he said those words, and I'll never forget, man. I thought to myself, that's what I want to do, you know, because this 40 years, he said, the Lord has never let me down, and I knew I needed that. I needed at that time, and, I, and just something went on inside of me, said, that's what I want to do. But now, let me tell you something. My family was less than a perfect family, and... Uh, had some real bad influence on my older brother growing up. Um, he tried to commit suicide later on, a couple different times, as a matter of fact. And uh, he was just a kid that mom had spoiled. And seeing that, uh, you know, mom was that kind of a person who would spoil a, an older child. She wasn't all that mature either, I come to learn later in life. <laughs> so, you know, it's not that they were extra bad people. That's just a situation they were raised in, you know. They're, my mom's mom and dad didn't really discipline her a lot. And, you know, and it still, still is a great, uh, has a great influence on her life today. And I thought, you know, why didn't God put me in a better family? Why didn't he put me in a situation where I was raised by Oral Roberts, you know? Or, or I could have been raised in the same family with Dwight Thompson or somebody like that. And why wasn't I afforded the opportunity to go to school and learn about God? You know, I just wasn't afforded those types of things in, in my raising. So... Uh, I, I know that God has everything in, in, in control. He puts us in the situations where He wants us to be in to 
guide our hearts in the direction that he needs for us to go. Even the wife that I have married, you know, uh, God has, I can see where God has guided my heart with her. She has taught me so much about the integrity of being a human. See, because I didn't have any integrity. I, when I was young and growing up, I went into the military. I didn't understand anything about what the military was about and why I had to be there, why it was necessary. You know, but, but now I have those convictions in me when I'm 60 years old. And I should have had those convictions in me when I was um, 18 years old. There's a lot of young men who join the military and they, and they have to put their lives in harm's way because of that. And they just don't understand. Back in the 60s when they was having the, uh, what was it, 60s, 70s, late 70s, they were having the riots about uh, the Vietnam vets. And I'm, I'm a Vietnam vet. And they were having the riots, riots about the Vietnam vets. Or, uh, well, I don't want to say riots, I'm, you know, they were having a lot of demonstrations about, and they were so dogmatic. Those those young people that was having those demonstrations had no idea what this country was about, why we should stand up for such a thing, and they just didn't have that type of integrity taught into them. The parents didn't, you know, that's when the uh, people were getting out of church, and they were stopped believing in God and stuff like that. And that's what the Bible tells us. When a country forgets God, it'll be turned into destruction. You can see where this country is being turned into destruction right now because of the drifting away from God. So I thought, well, why wasn't, didn't God just put people in the place he wanted them and, and have them to do those things and, and uh, that they would have been, you know, taught by somebody else. Well, listen, Jesus was not put into a perfect situation either. You may That may shock you, but he wasn't. <laughs> Jesus was born in a scandalous situation. His ancestors didn't have perfect backgrounds either. King David, who was... Uh, the great 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 grandfather of the Lord Jesus uh, had a he killed a man over uh, the Lord Jesus' great 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 grandmother you know Bathsheba and King David David took the wife of Uriah the Hittite so it's not that a lot of bad stuff don't follow us around and and a lot of things like that don't happen but it's like this it's what the choices that we make I've noticed that you know my brothers that I was raised up with they they made different choices than I made even though we went to the same church we ate at the same table we went to the same school we had a lot of the same friends but my heart I chose to do something different than my family does I'm the only preacher in my family there's a uh, my younger brother who has said that he would he has a desire but he's done nothing with it, you know. And uh, I'm sure that other members of my family, my older sister, she wanted to teach Sunday school one time, but when she found out there was work involved in it, the, the, the story was over, you know. It's, it's a job. It's something you got to love. And if your heart is pulling you that way, there is nothing in this world that can cause you to stop that can cause you to fail in God because your effort will be rewarded in heaven it's not that you have to be another Oral Roberts and, and lead the world in ministry but it's the effort that you make that's what God is looking for and just listen just go to church just stay faithful to the Lord just pray yeah we're gonna make mistakes yeah we're gonna fall back sometimes but get them keep going. Listen, if it's in your heart to do it, man, you'll get the job done. You'll be just like Superman, you know. You may falter sometimes, and somebody might throw some kryptonite your way, but listen, the Lord will take your small efforts and make great victories out of them.
no matter what situation you were born in. Okay, God bless. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Another great message right here in Crossing the Middle Ministry.